Yadkin. On a day's ride. You gonna settle in Yadkin? No, we're joining Daniel Boone's party. We're gonna locate the new valley he found over the mountain. Fine place from all I hear. You from Yadkin's friends? How many are going on Boone's party? Don't know exactly, but it'll be a pretty strong outfit. You ain't seen any Indians around, have you? No, maybe a hunting party or two, but Indians hereabouts are all friendly. It ain't nothing for you to worry about. That's what I keep telling you. Well... The sooner we get started, the sooner we'll get to Yatkin, I guess. Well, goodbye, friend. Safe journey. Thanks. Same to you. solemn occasion. Today, many of us will be setting out to make new homes in the unknown country across the mountains that they call Hain to He. I praise God that we go forth amidst a new atmosphere of peace and understanding with our Indian neighbors and under the prudent leadership of Daniel Boone. So, oh, Lord, look down upon us, thy people. Bless and keep us in all our ways. Guide and guard us as thou didst the children of Israel and bring us safely to this new promised land. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I'd better hurry up and get some of my stuff. Oh, yes, you must be getting things ready. Oh, Pompey. Uh, yes, Master Marlowe. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner. Pompey, Sir John said that I could borrow you to help me get some of my stuff ready. Uh, yes, sir, Master Marlowe. 
Just as soon as I go and tell the master, sir. Thank you. Uh, master, uh, Mr. Marlowe wants to know, can I go and help him pack his things, sir? Uh, certainly, Pompey. I'll ask you to take Master Jerry home. Oh, Jerry, uh, run along with Pompey. Yes, come, Master Jerry. We got to go see the Indian. I've got to get my things together and change. I'll see you later. Good morning, Mr. John. Good morning, Miss Virginia. Good morning, Commissioner. You're all very fortunate to be able to go on this expedition. Splendid opportunity. You'll all become rich. That's what they told Father about this Yadkin. Splendid opportunities. You'll all become rich. I don't have to tell you there were no fortunes made here. Now, now, dear, please, please. This would be different. How do you know it'll be different? Nobody's even seen the place except Daniel Boone. And what is he, a dreamer? Always chasing the next horizon? Uh, nothing of the kind. He's a man with imagination and foresight. Oh, quite, quite. Maybe you're right. Well, excuse me, Father. I have a dozen things to do before we leave. Good day, Commissioner. The highly strung Commissioner. Footprint. Yes. There's a white man with them. Yes, prisoner. No. No prisoner, Black Eagle. <laughs> if he were captive, he'd be bound and take short steps. This man takes long steps. This man's a leader. Only one white leader of Indian. Simon Gurdy. What would he be doing down here 400 miles from us? Maybe he hear about your party going across mountains. Hate white men. Your party, many scalp, many horses. Mr. Curdy, we've got to bring him in. They mount horses here. Get over there, get over there. Roll on me. Keep a going till my soul gets there. Oh, been reaving and rocking all along the way. I know there's something wrong. It's been that moment, that same old song. Ain't there no judgment there? Rock and reave, reave and rock. Roll on, weave and find a <laughs> think we're going to leave soon, Virginia? I guess so, dear. It's going to be lots of fun. You think we'll see any Indians? I hope not. We'll have enough trouble without Indians, I'm afraid. You needn't be afraid, Virginia. Mr. Boone will take care of us. He told me he would. You like Mr. Boone, don't you, Jerry? Lots and lots. Don't you? Oh, I haven't seen very much of him. I like Mr. Boone right off. And, uh, and he like you. Oh, I'm not interested whether he does or not. Did he really say he likes me? No. But I'm sure you'd say so if I asked him. Don't you dare. And don't you even let him know we talked about him. Can I be of any help, Miss Virginia? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Marlowe. Thank you. Everything tended to. Come here. Are you going with us, Mr. Marlowe? Yes, Jerry. You and I are going to be fellow adventurers. Between us, we'll have to take care of your sister, won't we? Yes, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll pay my respects to your father. Virginia. I don't like him. Jerry, you mustn't say a thing like that. That's very rude. Mr. Marlowe's a nice gentleman. And you must be polite to them. I'll be polite, but I won't mean it. Sir John? Well, you look like a frontiersman, Marlowe. <laughs> Though I must say that I thought an expedition of this kind was a bit out of your line. I expected you'd be returning to Richmond. As a matter of fact, that was my intention. But I have a feeling that this new country offers great possibilities. I think I we'd see. better put Jerry up on the feet, Father. He'd be out of the way there. All right, dear. Up you go, young man. We don't start soon. We'll never make that first leg by sundown. 
We can't do anything till Boom gets here. For two years now, he's been planning this expedition. And now, when everybody is ready, he has to go off on one of his hunting trips. There must be some very good reason for his absence. Well, I suppose all we can do is to sit here and wait for him to choose to come in. Sit here? Supposing something's happened. Why don't some of you men go out and look for him? What? Uh, Bert! Bert! Oh, Bert! Who won't show up yet? Ain't seen him. Don't you think we'd better try and pick up his trail? Wouldn't do no harm. I'll get Finch and a few of the boys. Right. happens, take care of Gertie. I thought you were a rich one, Boone. Where are you headed for? I'm on my way to Yadkin. Let me see that knife. It's only a trick. Don't move, Gertie. What's this, another joke? This is no joke. And don't try anything. You're covered from the brush. You're getting worried about you, Daniel. Stop to pick up a friend of yours. Moses in the cradle. It's Gertie. Well, well, here's the great scalper. Time you had a haircut yourself, Gertie. Easy, Joe. Save it until we get the Adkin.
Oh. Whom? What's the meaning of all this rumpus? I brought in Simon Gertie. Yes, yes, I know all that. What was he doing? I wasn't doing nothing. Quiet. Well, Boone, what is the charge? It's a matter of common knowledge, Commissioner. That Gertie has murdered and scalped scores of settlers, men, women, and children. And is continually arousing the tribes against us. That's a lie. Many a time I kept the tribes from burning white settlements. Ain't you the little angel of mercy? What's the use of all the argument? Hand him over to us. <laughs> you wouldn't be rough with us, would you, Commissioner? <laughs> Just a minute, friend. We're not going to lose anything by going slow. We'll see that justice is done. Good for you, Daniel. Where were you? Where were you? Right, Mr. Daniel. All right, then. That's fine. But the commissioner is in charge here. And we've got to respect his authority. Now then, my man, what have you to say for yourself? I say he ain't got no right to drag me in this way. I was out on a peaceful hunting trip with a small party of braves. Anything you had against me was wiped out when the peace was signed. Unless you can bring proof of some new crime, Boone, I don't see how we can hold him. As he says, when the peace treaty was signed, a general amnesty was granted to all the tribes. That only applied to Redskin. Gertie is a white man. Oh, I am, Doc. I've been adopted into the tribe, all regular, with full ceremony. And if anything happens to me, it'll start the tribes on the warpath again. There's a certain amount of truth in what he says, Boone. His death at this time might stir up serious trouble. There's far more trouble if he's allowed to live. No Indian on the frontier can equal the record of his massacre. No doubt everything you say is true, Boone. But we've given our word to the Indians, and we must respect even to the extent of letting this blackguard go. Got to end like this. Are you going to let the Lord Jesus? Let's get a roll. Yeah. Can Lord talk stop Gertie when well, he's got a tomahawk in one hand and a scalping knife in the other? No. Would you let a rattlesnake get another chance? No. Would you give a wolf another chance? No. I say, don't give this scalping burning Gertie another chance. No. Got to turn Gertie loose. I know how you feel. I felt the same way when I brought him in. But unfortunately, I heard this man is protected by the peace treaty. In a few minutes, out on a 500 mile journey over Mount Forest to a new Indian country, never before settled white people. If we hang Gertie, the Indians will claim we have broken faith with them. And this will bring down on your heads and your families the war hatchets of his redskin friends. I say Gertie's life isn't worth it. You think I'm right? Raise your hand. This horse, Black Eagle. You're free, Gertie. Get back to your tribe and don't ever show your face in a white settlement again. And if you take my advice, Boone, you'll never show your face outside a white settlement again. in 10 minutes. Vince, tell the boy to get the cattle going. Sir John, will you lend a hand? Certainly. Thank you. Good bye, Marla. My friend, I'm afraid I won't be seeing you for some time. Each man to his duties, Marla. I congratulate you on your spirit in helping to open new untitled lands for settlement. Yes, and don't forget that the most important thing about this enterprise is to see that those titles get into the proper hands. Exactly. 
And I can think of no better hands than yours and mine. Don't lose any time in sending in a full report. No worry. I'll bring it myself. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. hard day, Daniel. You think we ought to make camp? I know it's been hard, but we haven't covered much ground. I want to get to the river before sundown. Take over the wagons, Joe. I don't want any more breakdowns tomorrow. All right, then. I go bring cattle. Yes, they could fall ahead, and I thought they would. But uh, I'll send someone else. I want you here with me. Let me see. Hello, I want you to ride ahead and bring back the herd. Tell the boys we're going to camp here tonight. I'd, I'd have to swim that river. Those boys swam it. Down, so we better keep moving. This place we're going to Black Eagle. Get that soon? No, soon. Big, far away. Plenty forest. Plenty Indian. Say, is them Indians friendly? I mean, they wouldn't wear colored man, would they? Indian don't like black men. Hair too short. Huh? Indian like long hair. Scalp easy. Well, if the scalp no good, why don't they let it alone? I can see why the Indians don't like the white man. They ain't got nothing in common. Now, the colored man and the red man, 
It's different. They all belong to the same family. Huh? Well, what I mean is, they both have been baked by the sun. Now, you didn't know, Ann. You're just a little bit uh, underdone. Oh. Oh, 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 I give up, I give up. <laughs> Want to fight again? No, I'm afraid your sister might think I'm teaching you bad habits. <laughs> you won't see it. She went for a walk. Walk? Where? I don't know. Someplace. You know, I wish you knew Virginia a whole lot. Why? Then she'd like you and you'd come around all the time like Mr. Marlowe. Hmm. Does she, uh... Does she like Mr. Marlowe very much? Yes, so they're always laughing and talking. You know, I don't think Mr. Marlowe's very much fun. Do you? Well, now listen. About time you were in bed, young fellow. We've got to get an early start in the morning. Can you let me ride your horse again tomorrow? I'm leave. Up you come. Up. Good night. Always a picture this way. Always when I'm with you, my dear Virginia. It seems to me that the moon and I had better say good night. Oh, no, please, don't go. I'm serious, really, I am. I'm much too tired to be serious. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Boone. You rounding up the missing members of your flock? No, I came to see if the cattle were back. Where did you leave the model? I asked you a question. Did you carry out my order? Why not? You've plenty of boys around here to run your errands. I didn't join this expedition to play messenger. Well, oh, as long as you're with this expedition, you'll do as I say. Keep your hands off. Stop that. I see no reason for flying into a blind rage simply because Mr. Marlowe didn't jump to your orders. My orders are common good. I'm responsible for the lives of all of us. I appreciate that. But I'm sure Mr. Marlowe didn't realize the matter was so important. I'm sorry I lost my temper, Mr. Marlowe. Good evening. You brought it on yourself, Stephen. You were in the wrong, you know, and you were very ill-mannered. Good night. Where to go? <laughs> now I know you're a fuck. I've seen you shoot. I've seen nothing that I heard Charles Lone did it. That's right. I seen him fire the turkey at 50 feet, and he missed it. If that's so, I can bring down a turkey with a knife at 50 feet. You don't quit that yap, and I'll bring you down with a good swift. Ah, oh, good thing. That's what I've been trying to do for 15 minutes. <laughs> Rode hard, Daniel. The herd was scattered last night. Redskins? Yes. What about the boys? Well, killed? Who done it? Wine those. Goody? Yes, we trailed them for a while, but gone north fast. A long start. Better take a half dozen men, get out there, and uh, see if you can't round up that herd. Joe, take three boys, get out there as fast as you can, and bury the bodies. Right. What's the orders, Daniel? We go right on.
Don't you fear no danger, night or day, while on the trail you go. Make way, land of promise is ruling on. Follow, I'll give you ten minutes to clear out. Clear out? But you can't do that to me, Boone. I'd die out here alone. You heard what I said. Virginia! Virginia! Boone's given me ten minutes to get out. He blames me for that killing. You are to blame. If you'd gone last night, this would have happened. Yes, but I didn't think important. I never dreamt they'd be killed. You know I didn't. Please, Virginia, you must help me. Talk to Boone. He won't listen to me. Oh, yes, he will. He'll do anything you ask. I know he will. Please, Virginia. I'll die if I'm left here alone. You must help me, please. Joe, get the cattle going, don't we? Right. Mr. Boone. Yes? Miss Marlowe just told me you ordered him to leave. That's right. Well, where can he go? Back where he came from. You know that's impossible. He's not like you or the others who've been brought up in the forest. He'll never find his way back to Yadkin alone. I'm giving him a better chance than he gave those boys last night. Oh, I know that was wrong. He didn't do it deliberately. Killing Stephen won't bring back those poor boys. We've had enough death. Please. I promise you'll have no more trouble. Please let him stay. All right. Tell him he can stay. Thank you. White squaw want Marlow. You want white squaw. Why not shoot Marlow? Take squaw. That's not the white man's way, Black Eagle. White way, no good. White man, soft here. Soft here. <laughs> Maybe you're right.
that thou hast brought us safely across these mountains and hast spread before us this beautiful valley for our homes. to bring back from Gadkin, then. Powder, shot, flour, rope, axle grease. Virginia. Yes? I couldn't go without making one final effort. It's no use. Virginia, you're condemning yourself to a life of drudgery. I'm going back to great wealth. Come with me. As my wife, you can have anything in the world you want. I have everything I want right here, thank you. Why don't you be honest about yourself? I'm... Yes, not in love with Boo. I think you'd better go. Good luck, Ben. You ought to make Yadkin in about 30 days. Tell everybody what we've got here and bring back with you as many families as you can. Right. Thank <laughs> God, that take good care of it, Ben, and be sure it gets delivered. <laughs> don't forget that jug of whiskey, Ben. And don't drink it before you get back. Sir. <laughs> I twisted my ankle. I'm a few minutes. I think it'll be all right. Let me help. The last log is laid and the settlement completed. What shall we call? What's the matter with New Yadkin? That's where we all come from. We're on the Kentucky River. Why not call it Kentucky City? That's an Indian name. And I don't name nothing after no redskin. What do you think, Sir John? Well, uh... Oh, uh, Pompey, uh, we're trying to find a name for the settlement there. Uh, what would you suggest? Well, sir, it appears to me... It'd be mighty nice to name it after Mr. Boone, sir. Pompey, you hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the future of Boonesboro. Time, Bob. 
Mother? Mother, you know. Oh, I suppose we'd better get it over before you burst. And you remember what you're going to say? Yes, sir. I've been saying it over and over. Oh, right. uh, Pompey, uh, go about quietly and tell everyone to assemble over here. Uh, yes, sir, Sir John. Right away, sir. Come on. Oh, I think you've done enough. Besides, remember your ankle. There really isn't anything wrong with it. Mighty kind of you, Miss Randolph, if you could remain lame a little longer. I'll try, Miss Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we're both laughing at the same thing. Mr. Boone, Miss Randolph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's silly to be so formal, isn't it? Let's stop it. All right, Daniel. Or do you prefer Daniel? I like it any way you say it, Virginia. Mr. Boone, sir. Hey. Uh, the gentleman would like to see you, sir. All right, I'll be right over. Yes, sir. All right. Here he is. Come on, Daniel. Make way, folks. Make way, Daniel. Daniel Boone, in come. Commemoration. Commemoration of this day which sees us come. Completion. Here's a right. <laughs> Say something, Daniel. Friends? I thank you very much. <laughs> well, I guess that about covers it. But I do thank you. And I don't feel I'm entitled to any special credit. What we've done, we've done together. In five short months, we built our new home, surveyed our lands and found them rich. We've cleared enough acreage for the sprinting. And I thank God the Indians have left us in peace. And I look forward with you, my friends, to many years of happiness and to a bountiful prosperity for us all. Sorry, I forgot my speech, Daniel. Very well, Jerry. Was ahead to help me. I helped you, didn't I? <laughs> think your ankle could stand the strain of another dance? I think so, Daniel. Settlers. I wonder if they add to them. Whoever they are, let's give them welcome. Welcome to Boonesboro, friends. Where are you from? Richmond. From the governor of Virginia, greeting. By these presents, be it known that the territory west of the Cumberland Mountains, known herefore as the Valley of Cain to Key, is hereby incorporated into the Commonwealth of Virginia. Wherefore, be it known to all those who lay claim to lands in the aforesaid territory, that unless on or before the 15th day of October of this year of our Lord, 1775, they were claims to such lands with the proper authorities in Richmond with prescribed fees and purchase price, their claims to title in such lands as they now presume to hold shall be declared null and void. What's all this law? Do you realize what this means? We own this land. You've got to file proper claims. Well, according to that paper, we haven't got time to file them. We hold squatters right. That's always been title enough. It's not considered legal in Richmond. If you resist, they'll send the militia and drive you off. Friends, please, please. We won't gain anything by armed resistance. 
I'll talk to the governor. If we have to do all this legal business, I'm sure he'll give us reasonable time to do it. Friends, you're welcome to stay and refresh yourselves. We'll be returning to Virginia tomorrow. If you care to come with us... No, I'm leaving right away. I'm... Virginia. Wouldn't it do just as well if you wrote a letter to the governor explaining everything? These men are leaving tomorrow. They could take it. Save you that long trip. I'm afraid not, Virginia. I'm sure everything will straighten out all right, but I don't want to leave anything to chance. You will be careful. Is there anyone you care to send a message to in Richmond? No. Bye, Virginia. Bye, Jane. Bye, Jane. Bye, Jane. Oh, you so good luck seems to be deserting you, my lad. <laughs> be getting her own back for once, Marlowe. Oh, my luck will change. Come in. What is it, Peter? It's that Mr. Boone again, sir. Oh, say that I'm busy. Tell him to come back some other time. I told him, sir, but he's very insistent. He's been with you for three days, and he says he won't go until he has. Well, it's becoming really a nuisance. Now, why don't you see him and get it over with? After all, you you are the Attorney General, you know. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. But I hate to stop the game right now. Oh, Peter, clean up this stuff. Yes. Sir. Now, gentlemen, let us assume a judicial attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boone, the Attorney General will see you. Yes, Mr. Boone? Sir, the governor has referred me to you. He said your office takes care of all land disputes. Quite correct. Well, sir, I've come to Richmond to straighten out the matter of title to our lands on the Cane Tukey River. Yes, yes. I discussed that matter with the governor. But I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. You'll be fired to file claims in the proper manner, which you failed to do. You didn't give us time for that. Besides, we've never had to file title before. Squatters' rights have never been questioned. I found that valley, sir. Spent two years organizing an expedition to settle it. We've cleared it, planted it, and built our home. Title, then what is? I'm sorry, Mr. Boone, but we cannot make an excuse. When new land is taken into the state, it falls immediately under its law. Matter of fact, the claim on this land has been filed. Cannot be set aside. It isn't hard to guess who filed that claim. I came here honestly expecting that this office would protect us in our just claims land. Instead, I find myself among the gang of thieves who have stolen them. I'm all right, and I'll put you under arrest. Enjoying yourself, aren't you, Marlowe? Immensely. I haven't forgotten, Mr. Boone, that you once threatened to turn me out into the wilderness. Very soon now, I shall have the very great of driving you and your rabble off my property.
Why, brother, sad. Long time now. Can't help it, Black Eagle. How can I face those people? How can I tell them their lands and their homes have been stolen? No let take. Fight! That's what I want to avoid. No. I guess we'll have to go somewhere else all over again. You make fire. I could get it. I say to you, my brothers of the Cherokees, Wyandot, Tawa, the Tawney, that now is the time to strike. Already the whites have advanced over the mountain and have built a strong stockade in the heart of your hunting ground, the King to Key. Now it is but one small village. Tomorrow it'll be two, then three, then four, and you'll be driven farther and farther west. Saved you the trip. Oh, we don't mind the trip. We're going anyway. I got a little score to settle with your Yadkin crowd. You'll never take Boomsborough, Gertie. It's too well fortified. There are too many good rifles there. Look around, John. This is only part of our. Besides, your friends in Boomsborough won't be expecting us. That's why we left them alone so long. So they'd get careless. Smart, eh? I wish I had let them hang you in Yadkin. You'll wish more than that before I get through with you. Fire up! Get the fire! <laughs>
Indian, sound the alarm. Let him in.
be a good little rain carry off. Rain for that fire, don't let fire again. I'm not going. I'm not going to leave here. I'm going to live home. Oh, my God. Panel, it may be one of those old tricks. They might be laying a trap for us. I doubt it, Joe. I slipped out last night and had a look around. There wasn't a sign of them anywhere. I think they've slid out for good. I hope you're right, Dan. Where's Dan going? Just looking around. He'll be back pretty soon. Are you sure you want to come with me to the western country? I'll go anywhere with you, darling. We must find new homes for these people. 